My name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a small, medium sized tech company from Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst and a financial journalist and a research engineer. And tonight, I'd like to speak to you as a former Bernie delegate and a person who's been uh, advocating for people to recognize that we are in a climate emergency now uh, and a person who tries to study the science. <clears throat> I've done five small vignettes on Biden's climate plan. The first being an explanation of where we stand, which is basically the total collapse of nature in the next two to three decades of mass starvation, where the living uh, may envy the dead, potentially. Uh, we're seeing it more rapidly than we thought, and the problem is the feedback loops. Uh, when there are these slippages, like, whoops, this uh, uh, you know, ice shelf collapsed earlier than we thought in our models, it accelerates everything else. <coughs> and so these fires this year, Indonesia didn't have as many fires, and they emitted as much as 700 megatons um, at one time. So, um, <clears throat> so what I found out in studying this balance uh, in the uh, or evaluating the Biden climate plan uh, and our existential situation. That's uh, episode two. It's where we get to watch Joe Biden give a very good climate speech about a week and a day ago, uh, Monday of last week, actually. Um, and then I show Trump's total denialism. Uh, and then uh, we look at uh, an example, Biden in his town hall, to see on his feet how he reacts and what he, he really would uh, you know, think when he's not with a, a, a speech. And so, you know, this part is a, uh, you know, a restatement that it's good that the Biden campaign is taking all of this seriously. Um, but what we're facing is much uh, more grave than um, a 2030 or 2050 deadline. We really have to put a moratorium on fossil fuels now other than essential use, meaning to create solar panels and make food the minimum possible, maybe 95% reduction in fossil fuel use immediately. And then the total focus on rebuilding our forests and things like that. And the very frustrating thing is that we're acting so late um, because um, to, the best thing we can do is to restore our natural systems ability to cope with uh, climate change. And I think I've kept most of these pictures here on this site. So this picture here, the global carbon cycle, this is how many gigatons a year is absorbed by vegetations and land and soils and trees and how much is emitted by them. And then this is the amount that is uh, absorbed by oceans and this is about to, emitted by them. And in theory, <clears throat> this should mean that we could produce up to the difference in pollution without increasing the global CO2 rate. So we're at roughly double uh, what uh, that would be to bring it into sync. So we're looking at 11 here and six here, 17. So if we could just cut this to 17, in theory, we would be in balance. So the problem is we're already overheated, but that means if we could cut it to 12, does that mean we're drawing down, by drawing down five gigatons a year, will that be enough? And how do we increase these two numbers, the vegetation and land number, and the ocean numbers. And so far, what I found is sparse. So this is the beginning of an interesting journey. Now, in this article, what we see uh, is some very interesting pictures here, which this picture here displays the growth of carbon sinks. The first map shows a breakdown of the world's different biomes. Uh, so, you know, we can zoom in a bit if we wish. Then, does that work? No, we have to do like so. There we go. Uh, let's move this in here. <clears throat> so these are the different biomes. And then the forest cover. And then the relative loss of growth since 1981 the blue being the areas of the greatest growth. And poor Vietnam looks like it's had its heavy deforestation and uh, 
Indonesia. <clears throat> so this is also an interesting article describing how the boreal forests have actually increased their absorption more than the Amazon, Congo, and Southeast Asian tropical forests have lost, but that there's a risk that those could go up in smoke literally or die young from disease through drought and infestations uh, so that you could end up with a huge uh, carbon bomb getting dropped later. And in truth, <clears throat> uh, there is about a gigaton potentially of CO2 being emitted from forest fires this year, which is probably you know, 300% of the baseline. Although, um, you know, to determine the exact effect of burning that uh, wood now, rather than the way it would normally pass through uh, without the climate changes, involves both positive and negative feedbacks because <clears throat> even without climate change, that wood will naturally a lot of it will go to the atmosphere one or the other eventually. Um, I think it's a matter of rate. So I've got my uh, notes on this here in the Futurology Ecology uh, spreadsheet. Um, and um, the things that I took away from this is first of all, it's extremely uh, distressing that the amount of carbon absorption the profitable forests are providing, which could easily be three gigatons a year or more um, is being um, is, is being degraded rapidly. So Brazil was at two gigatons, and you've got the Congo, and you've got the Southeast Asian rainforests. Um, I'm trying to put all the figures together. I know that the Brazil alone was two gigatons, so one would presume you'd be looking at five gigatons or more. Um, and uh, uh, and this lost 30% of its CO2 uh, uh, absorbing capabilities just from the 1990s to 2010. So it's rapidly declining its ability to act as a carbon sink, which is the opposite of what we want. We want to nurse these systems back to health. <clears throat> and then, you know, there's the other big question, which is what can we do about ocean um, absorption of CO2 and sequestration of CO2? So what I read, uh, I couldn't get very uh, uh, promising data. So for example, on drawdown, if I still have them open here somewhere, drawdown, 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 here it is. <clears throat> if you look at their coastal and ocean sinks, they're not showing much impact at all, one gigaton over the next 20 years. So <clears throat> this is a mystery when you look at this, but on the other hand, when you look at this you see quite a different picture. You see a six gigaton um, potential um, ability of the ocean to um, naturally purge the atmosphere. Six gigatons a year is what it appears. So on the face of it, if we could, if we could somehow halt this climate change clock. The only way we can really do that is to just stop all fossil fuels immediately. If we do that, um, we can, uh, which I know sounds like a tall order, but for the sake of argument, if you could reduce it 90%, just have the essentials with fossil fuels and quickly move over to uh, renewables and pay people a universal basic income to keep them at home until you've got things tooled up to let them be a bit busier. But, you know, they can be artists, comedians, musicians, massage artists, poets. There's lots of things they can do without burning carbon. They're just not paid very well in capitalism. Oh, ho. <clears throat> so by doing that, by drawing down a good 10 gigatons a year out of the atmosphere, cut down from 37 gigatons to seven gigatons or 10 gigatons at most, uh, that gives us seven gigaton a year budget, which means after 10 frickin' years, it begins to slow uh, the, uh, the emissions. <clears throat> um, because we're, uh, but if we can expand those natural systems of sequestration, and for, I understand it's very promising with soil. So that will be my next step. So forests, you know, uh, I'm still trying to get my head around it, but it appears forests are providing something like 
at least six gigatons a year of CO2 store sequestration services. So I'll uh, continue tomorrow. Thank you.